Okay, now we're going to do a baseball uh, example about hitting a baseball over a fence. So suppose you've got a player at home plate uh, who hits a baseball and he hits it from about three feet off of the ground and of course what he wants the ball to do is to go up in a parabolic arc and go over the fence and in this case we've got a left field fence that's 20 feet high and it's 350 feet from home plate. Uh, so let's suppose that the uh, player hits the ball with a velocity of 170 feet per second which about, is about a reasonable speed for a batted baseball and it goes off at an angle of 10 degrees from the horizontal. So this is V0 is up here. This angle theta is equal to 10 degrees. All right, so the question is, will the ball clear the fence? Now, sometimes it helps when you're doing an experiment to think about rephrasing the question, because in rephrasing the question, you can make it clear how the problem should be solved. So whenever you get a question, you should think, what does this question really mean? Well, what this question really means is, when the ball gets to the fence, is its height, y, greater than 20 feet? Okay. So the height is going to change during the entire motion, but if the height is less than 20 feet when it gets to this point, then it's not going to clear the fence. So we can rephrase this as, what is the y, the height, when the ball reaches the fence? Okay, well now in this case, uh, we are given the initial velocity and we're given the direction so we can just go ahead and calculate what y is and what x is uh, from that motion. So for instance, we've got v0 uh, is equal to 150, 70 feet per second. We've got the uh, angle so that we can say vx0 is equal to v0 times the cosine of 10 degrees. So that's equal to 170 feet per second. Cosine of 10 degrees is 0.985. All right. Uh, and I didn't actually calculate that. I know that the position at any time is given by Vx0 times the time. And so I can use this equation and that number here to calculate uh, how long it takes for the ball to reach the fence. So this implies that T is equal to X over V X zero. That's equal to uh, 350 feet divided by 170 feet per second times the cosine of uh, 10 degrees, which is 0.985. And I got that T is equal to 2.09 seconds. So it takes the ball. Remember, we're talking about no air resistance in this calculation. Baseballs do have a fair amount of air resistance, but this, this hit is going to be a screamer. It's going to take 2.09 seconds to go from the plate to the outfield wall. Okay, so we've got the time. Uh, we now need to figure out what the height is and after 2.09 seconds. All right, I'm going to erase this. And the height at any time is given by the initial height plus the velocity, the initial velocity in the y direction, that's v y zero times the time plus one half a t squared. Okay. V y zero is just going to be 170 feet per second times the sine of uh, 10 degrees. 
And so if I put in the numbers, I'm going to get y is equal to 3 feet. That y0 is because the ball was hit about 3 feet off the ground, plus 170 feet per second times the sine of 10 degrees times 2.09 seconds plus one half times minus 32 feet per second squared times 2.09 seconds squared. And notice I've done this meticulously. If I'm talking about y in the positive direction, that acceleration due to gravity has to be a minus sign. And so if I calculate this, I get y is equal to 3 feet. Uh, the second term here is 61.6 feet. Looks good. And then the third term is minus 69.8 feet. And I get y is equal to minus 5.2 feet. Well, what does that mean? That means that the height of the ball when it reaches the fence would be minus 5.2 feet. That means it never reaches the fence. The ball goes up and it lands somewhere out here and it never makes it to the fence. So this is a, uh, a line drive that lands out in, in left field and it doesn't go over the fence. So what is the batter going to do? Well, well, let's just assume that the batter always is going to hit the ball off the bat at about 170 feet per second. He's got to raise the, the angle at which he hits the ball. And uh, I tried this just for fun, just try it out with theta is equal to 20 degrees. If you go to theta is equal to 20 degrees, I got that the time it takes to get to the outfield is 2.19 seconds. Not very different than what we just calculated. Uh, but the height when it reaches the wall is 53 feet. So the height, let's see, 53 feet minus 20 feet, the ball would clear the uh, fence by, 20, by 33 feet. So there's quite a bit, big difference between hitting the ball at 20 degrees and uh, hitting it at 10 degrees, okay? All right, so we rephrase this question. We said, how high is the ball going to be when it gets to the fence? And we use that to calculate the time it takes to get to the fence. We calculated the time it takes to get to the fence and then calculated the height.